What you are watching right now is a rocket taking off from the game Kerbal Space Program. Today's mission is to deliver a very generic satellite to a circular 200 km zero degree inclination orbit. What makes this interesting is not the mission itself, but rather that this launch is parameterized and entirely automated. Let's move the launch view aside and look at how this is accomplished. MATLAB and Simulink are designed with aerospace control in mind, which makes basic control of the rocket nice and simple. While hardware compatibility is also a strong suit, this exact application is a bit out of that scope, so the first course of action was getting Simulink to talk with Kerbal Space Program. The base game understandably has no way of communicating with Simulink, but there is a nice mod called KRPC which opens up API access to the game, and thus the vehicle information. While this mod allows access to the needed information, it still doesn't talk with Simulink. MATLAB, however, can execute Java code, which, coupled with KRPC, allows Simulink to talk with KSP using a MATLAB function block. Now that Simulink can read sensor data and command the vehicle, some actual control logic can be written. In the top level model, there is an input area where data is read in, a configuration area that is for specifying flight parameters, a logging area for post-flight analysis, and the main area where the flight logic lives. The flight of the vehicle consists of three distinct steps, though this number is highly subject to change as the guidance logic evolves. The flight starts with a brief startup phase, where it makes sure the vehicle is correctly configured for automated flight. Once this has been checked, it switches over to the stage 1 flight phase. Here, the engines start and the rocket lifts off. At this point, it is following a path to execute a gravity turn such that it would end parallel with the ground at a user-specified altitude. The logic to determine the desired orientation at the current moment in time is done here. Once the orientation is calculated, the vehicle needs to be commanded into it. This logic is done using a parameterized link to a library that can be reused throughout the project. The library takes desired and actual orientations along with the ship's angular velocity and returns control values for pitch yaw and roll commands. Inside the library, you can see how the orientation difference is decomposed into angle axis representation, which contains most of the information we want. At the same time, the angular velocity in the local reference frame is calculated. Now, all these values can be combined, so the rotation angle is related to the desired angular velocity, and the Euler vector components are the proportion of angular velocity that should be on each axis. This is compared with the actual angular velocity that was calculated to find an error value. For all axes, this error is fed into PID loops, which are parameterized. Note that while pitch and yaw have affected the same moment of inertia, the roll of the rocket has a significantly smaller one. For this reason, the pitch and yaw can be tuned together, but the roll needs to be tuned separately. After stage separation, the guidance changes from a ground-centric view to an orbit-centric view. For missions at zero degree inclination, the only needed orbital actions are raising and lowering burns, though in practice only raising burns are of concern now. The second stage is broken down into three steps. First is the initial raise, where the stage simply wants to get into a somewhat stable orbit with an apogee at the target, 200 kilometers in this case. It does this by pitching up and down to maintain a time to apogee of about 10 seconds. This means that the burn's effect on the orbit is easy to predict. Once the target apogee is reached, the engine is shut down and the stage begins its coast phase. Once it coasts to just before its apogee, the engine is briefly reignited to raise its perigee to 200 km as well. Note that all of the attitude commands are calculated using the same parameterized library link as the first stage. During all of this, Simulink was also logging selected signals. This data can be plotted afterwards to analyze the flight and determine points of inefficiencies. The data is also invaluable while debugging. While this project was entirely virtual, a real-world project could swap out the inputs and outputs for simulated data to allow for testing. There is a lot more work to do before I would consider this project complete, notably allowing for more complicated orbits or even interbody missions. I would also like to increase the accuracy of the game by adding a series of realism mods. Finally, since it's too cool not to do, I want to implement a Falcon 9-style propulsive landing like I did previously using KOS. I will likely make future videos as this project evolves and gets more realistic. Check in this video's description for links to any future videos and my previous propulsive landing using KOS.